Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see the sliding mesh gearbox. So what is this sliding mesh gearbox? So here this is the configuration for the sliding mesh gearbox where this is the clutch shaft. This is the shaft which is coming from the engine. And now this is the sliding main shaft. It is the output shaft. And this is the lay shaft. So here with the help of this uh, gear lever, now here these gears are now going to slide on this sliding shaft. Means for engaging the second gear position, your this gear should be in contact with this gear directly so that you will get the direct drive. And for the first gear position, so this gear should be engaged with this gear so that you will be getting the first gear position. So this lay shaft, the gears on this lay shaft, they will be fixed, means they will be rotating there only. There will be no relative motion. But the gears which are mounted on the spline shaft, they will be having <laughs> sliding motion on this spline shaft. So for the sliding mesh gearbox here, with the help of this gear lever and connected to the selector knob, these gears are now going to engage with the gears mounted on the lay shaft. So now we will see how the sliding mesh gearbox works. This section examines gearbox operation. In a rear wheel drive manual transmission, the splines on the input shaft engage with the splines of the clutch driven plate. With engine rotation and the clutch engaged, the input shaft transfers its motion through the counter shaft to rotate the gears on the main shaft. In this neutral condition, the engagement sleeves and the hub spline to the output shaft are stationary. No drive is transmitted to the output. Depressing the clutch pedal removes the engine load from the input. This allows an engagement sleeve to be moved into engagement with the external teeth on the gear selected. This locks the gear to the main shaft. When the clutch is released, the drive is transmitted to the input gears along the counter shaft to the gear selected. Since this gear is now locked to the main shaft, the main shaft rotates and transfers the drive to the final drive unit. The speed ratio and the torque transferred depend on which gear is selected. In this four speed transmission, first gear, the smallest on the counter shaft, meshes with the largest gear on the main shaft to give first gear. This is the lowest forward ratio. The greatest number of turns of the input are required to achieve one turn of the output. This also gives the greatest torque multiplication. In second gear, power flow is through the next adjacent gear. The difference in speed between input and output shafts is reduced. Fewer turns of the input are required to give one turn of the output, but there is less torque multiplication. When the engagement sleeve for third gear moves into place, drive is transmitted through the meshing gears at an even higher ratio. In fourth gear, the input and output shafts are locked together. This provides a direct drive with a one to one ratio with no reduction through the counter shaft gears. The input and output shafts turn at the same speed and therefore there is no torque multiplication. The counter shaft gears and their corresponding gears on the main shaft continue to rotate as the counter shaft is constantly in mesh with the input gear, but they do not transmit any drive. With the vehicle in motion, these gears will be turning at different speeds in relation to the main shaft and to the engagement sleeve, which is locked to the main shaft by the spline. When changing gear, their speeds must be synchronized so that the engagement sleeve can move smoothly into engagement. Thank you.